Hello family and welcome to Write Recipe for Travel. If this is the first time you're joining us, welcome. And if you've come back to see us again, welcome back. I'm your host, Cynthia. I'm Elaine. I'm Tiffany. And we're here today to give you the 10 key facts that every first time cruiser must know. So sit back, relax, and let us take it from here. Giving you the 10 things every first time cruiser, you just gotta know. Make sure that you have a jacket or a sweater because it's really cold inside the cruise ship and if you're cold natured like I am you would most definitely appreciate yourself for doing so so definitely take a jacket or a sweater also the rooms and the cruise ship guess what they're on the odd and even side yes they have an odd side they have an even side so when you're looking for your room, you want to, whatever it is, if it's an odd number, you go on the odd side. And so you'll know that by when you're walking down the aisles, you'll notice, oh, these rooms are odd or even. So that's another thing you'd like another to know. Thing you'd like to know another one is it's, it's good to have a passport with you. It just makes your cruising experience easier to get you to the ports and often on the ships easier if you have the passport. And plus you can use your passport for a, uh, about 10 years. Um, and I usually get my, it takes two steps really to get the passports. You first need your picture. And I've always found it just easier to go to Walgreens and get your picture. Um, and then the second step is you have to find a post office that you can set an appointment to get that. Now keep in mind, they will keep your birth certificate. So mm -hmm. uh, never understood why, but they just do. And they'll mail it back to you in about mm, three weeks or so. And then you'll have your passport set. It's very helpful to have a passport. The next key factor I'd like to tell you about is, are you prone to seasickness? Uh, we never have been on our travels, no, but no. many are. So just be prepared. There's different types of medications that you can take. And there's also the bands now, the seasickness bands. So just mm -hmm. prepare ahead of time. Even if you, you're not sure, it's your first time, take the medication for seasickness or bring those seasick bands. Also, another thing is good is the bargains. You don't wanna shop the first couple of days because like the last couple of days um, when the cruise is ending, that's when you go to the shops. That's when they have the best bargains, 50% off, 70% off. So just wait, you'll be tempted, but you'll do yourself a big favor if you wait on the last couple of days to get your best buys. Another helpful hint is when you first go and you're all excited to get on that boat and you enter your room, be careful, don't do like me, which I do every cruise and almost fall in the bathroom. Keep in mind, the bathroom has a very, very high step up. So lift your foot up really high so you don't fall into the bathroom. I do it every cruise, so just be kind of mindful. The bathroom step is very high. The next one is the room size. So as you probably already know, because you book your cruise, you can choose different cruise cabins, starting from the least expensive, which is the inside cabin, to the most expensive, which is a suite. And on different cruise lines, the suites might be called different things, but just the accommodation. So keep in mind that if you're looking for the most affordable option to get onto your cruise, it's gonna be the inside cabin. And what does an inside cabin mean? Well, it means that there's no window. So no, it doesn't mean that it's really dark or scary. It just means you don't have a window to look outside. And then after that, the next step up would be what they call the porthole or the, the window um, room. Mm -hmm. Window, is that what it's called? The is it port ocean? The port ocean, view. Ocean, view. Oh, ocean view. Ocean view. Ocean view. Yeah. Window room, ocean view. <laughs> after that, then you have the balcony yes. and then the suites come next. Yes. So if you're looking for the most affordable option, you're gonna stick with what's called the inside. Another um, helpful hint is also too, since you're gonna be on the big boat with a bunch of people, um, the elevators. Keep in mind, the elevators will always be busy. It'll be crowded. So when the elevators open, please don't be one of those people that tries to rush and oh. let all the 50,000 people um, come out of the elevator. And just keep in mind too, if you wanna get your exercise on, there is an exercise, um, up, I think on the spa deck, there's an exercise room oh. and just a helpful hint. That's where like all the good looking people, like the oh. dancers and the bodybuilders. <laughs> so that's where like the sexy people are at. But if you wanna get some exercise because the, elevators were full like they will usually be uh, you can walk up all those flights of stairs that's a, also a helpful hint just give yourself a little extra time if you plan to take the elevators one of the best things on the cruise ship is the food the mm -hmm. food the food the food yeah. you can get whatever you want things you thought about can't even pronounce you can get that 
and two lobsters, three lobsters, whatever, and that ice cream is food galore. Um, the food is just delicious. It's just, you, you just order to your heart content. You can have two desserts, two breakfast types food, two or three, and it's just one. Enjoy the food as soon as you get on there and you can have food of your choice. And what about the food? What's so good about all that food? It's free, it's free, it's free. That's the beauty of it. Is all of the food free? For the most part, you um, they have a diner that you can go to. You have to book to uh, res have a specialty um, dining. A specialty dining, so you have to pay for that, and some of the other food you pay for. But for the most part, most of the food is free. So you get the free food. That's what I'm talking about, and enjoy it. Also, a very helpful hint, something that I think all first-time cruisers should know: go the day before. Oh, now I know yes. it's not always possible because of let's just face it money and possibly the time that you can take off but if at all possible make sure that your vacation has that extra day go the day before there's just been too many mishaps too many yes. stories of missing the plane so you miss the boat or or any other you're going to drive in and there's an accident on the freeway mm -hmm. a tire blows out there's just so many too many ifs that can happen and you don't want all that stress so Go the day before your cruise, book a hotel, stay there, get to know that cruise port city, um, mm -hmm. have that as just part of your vacation. But just make sure it takes all of the hassle out of getting there and waiting to the last minute and possibly missing the boat. We're That's throwing awesome. a bonus at you. Yeah, bonus yes. at me. Um, if um, check where your rooms are at we found um, we have found from experience that we did not like being under the Lido deck oh no <laughs> it's fun no. and great to be on the Lido deck all day long but not if your room is under that Lido deck because <laughs> all you hear is chairs moving all night long parties. so and parties I, you know I didn't really notice the music as much but I noticed chairs were being moved all day long so if you're wanting kind of some peace and quiet, make sure you look where your rooms are. You know, if you don't want to be necessarily to like say where the kids are at, don't book oh, your room under no. that. Uh, <laughs> like I said, the Lido deck, if you don't want all the party and the noise. So just kind of be mindful where you book your rooms. Here are 10 wonderful must knows that every first time cruiser should know. And we even gave you a bonus. Thanks so much for sharing with us. Don't forget to pound down on that subscribe button and give us a like. Thanks, and we'll see you again. Bye. Bye.